America Trends is brought to you by Northwest Biotherapeutics, a clinical stage biotechnology company focused on personalized cancer vaccines. And Bloom and Brands Incorporated with brands like Outback Steakhouse, Carabas Italian Grill, Bonefish Grill, and Fleming's Prime Steakhouse and Wine Bar. First Wave Biopharma, a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company specializing in therapies for gastrointestinal diseases. And Splash Beverage Group, Tap Out, Salt Tequila, Copa de Vino, and Pulp Loco Sangria. watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin and we are chatting with Chef Hyken, Chief Amazement Officer and Customer Service Expert. Chef, right before the break, we were talking about the six kind of pillars and, and things that business owners should do to create that good customer service experience from the inside out, right? And what yeah. we cut you off on the sixth one. So what was that sixth one? Oh, it was easy. Celebrate it when it works. Celebrate it all. Hey. If, if they're doing a good job, you need to let the people know they're doing a great job. Uh, otherwise, they won't be as fulfilled. They'll be wondering all the time. So constant recognition for great job. Uh, a job well done. That's that's key. I agree so, with that because I think, you know, everybody likes a good pat on the back and it helps boost morale and it helps, you know, if I know that, that someone's going to give that to me, I just innately want to do better for that person and for that customer or for that boss or whoever it is, right? Yeah, one of the top reasons people stay at work, and by the way, this is really important. If you want to find out with all these people leaving and you try to do an exit interview, you find out, why are you leaving? Well, I'm going somewhere else. They're paying me more. They're doing this, they're doing that. How about a staying interview? The people that have stayed around for a while, find out why they stay around. I'll bet you find out they like their boss, they like the culture, they like who they work with. And somewhere toward the bottom of the list is they like how they're being paid. Because they're being paid well enough, it doesn't necessarily have to be the highest number. Great if it is. But that's what the key is, creating the culture and the environment that people are excited to come to work about. I want to talk to you about uh, two things that are very big now and really coming up in our technology boom, which would be self-service options. And mm -hmm. that certainly came to be during COVID. I mean, it was already kind of in the works, but, you know, everything got accelerated, as you mentioned. So self-service options are increasingly important and they're good for customer service. But then also if it's self-serve, you're not really having anyone to help the customer if something goes wrong. Well, so there's self-service and then there's the right way of doing self-service. <laughs> so if you go to the grocery store, here's a great metaphor. You go to the grocery store, you decide you don't want to go in the long line. You only have a few items. So you go over to the self-service checkout area. I'm going to bet a nickel to a dollar. Almost every time there will be somebody there to help you when you go to scan that piece of fruit that doesn't have a barcode on it. Yeah. And they'll tell you exactly how to input it so that you can get on your way. And that's the key. If you're going to use a self-service option, and let's say you're using it for general customer support, trying to get people to go to a website, a website look at a, uh, a frequently asked question piece or perhaps a video tutorial. You've got to train your customers to do it. But at the same time, if they are having difficulty, there needs to be a really easy transition to a live human being. And that's what the best companies are able to do. They're able to balance the, between the two. Think about when you go and get an airline ticket. Today, you go online. But if you have a problem, there's a phone number to call. And hopefully, you get through to somebody quickly who can then take care of you. It's the same thing in customer service. Well, and then also along these same lines is conversational AI, where it's a, a chat bot, mm -hmm. you know, messaging with you. And I had a situation where I left my phone in an Uber recently, and I thought, oh my gosh, it was so easy. I could click a button. Oh, you left your, you left a, something in the Uber. And I had to click the button and then it said, give us your phone number so we can put you in touch with the driver. Well, my phone was the thing in the vehicle, so I could not... <laughs> get through and then I did it was a long story uh we showed a video about it in a previous was it episode. a good story it wasn't I was so frustrated I had to stalk the man through life 360 and go to his home with Jared our director 24 hours later because I wasn't able to get my phone back and there he is he's ready to go right happy now happy birthday Jared <laughs> got your birthday shout out 
And, you know, I'll tell you that it was so frustrating. And I thought, I am not going to use Uber anymore. I don't know if Lyft has a better way of doing this. But the driver couldn't get a hold of me. And I couldn't get a hold of the driver. And that was something innately broken within this massive major company that should have the technology to help p people. But are they just like, I'm, we're so big, we can't handle all these lost phones, so we don't really care? Well, I, I, it's, you know, there should be, I'm sure that a lost phone is probably one of the, mu the most popular lost right. items. You know, That's so there what I would should think. be a process in place. And this is what we tell our clients to do. Sit down with your team and talk about what the biggest questions, problems, complaints, et cetera, are, and do it as a team. And then when you start to list them, how often do they happen? And what's a good solution? And what you should do is take a look at these, this list and prioritize. And you can't do all of them at once, but go for the top two or three. Mm -hmm. People leaving items in an Uber or a Lyft. And what, are the, what is the item that causes the biggest problem when they leave their phone? Why? Because now we can't call them. We can't contact them. We don't know anything about them. Um, so unfortunately, if you think about it, no offense, Mary, you left the phone. And Uber <laughs> right. can only do so much <laughs> for you. It was my but, fault. But yeah, I like and, you and by say. The way, that, doesn't mean, that doesn't mean they shouldn't take care of you. The customer may not always be right, but they are always the customer. They're still the customer, and I still want to keep coming back to use Uber. It was just very, very frustrating that it took because then I I did reach out via Twitter, and they said, "Oh, we're message, we're emailing you," and I wasn't getting emails, and it was just a big cluster, and it was not a good customer service experience. Um, and what do you think about utilizing uh, Twitter and social media platforms for customer service? Very powerful. Yeah. Um, so there's there's two reasons. Uh, first of all. Uh, social media is probably the least popular channel that people are reaching out on to get customer support, at least as an initial channel. What they do is they go to social media, be it Twitter, Facebook, anywhere that they can post a message. And they're not necessarily doing it because they really need help right now. They're probably seeking revenge because it's their second or third effort to get noticed and get heard. So I would suggest uh, and by the way, we were working with a client who was getting ready to spend a lot of money on their social media customer care. And they said they found a lot of people were going there. And here's what I suggest. Take a look at the primary ways people reach you. And if they're not happy, that's why they often will move to social media. If you are a customer and you want to get heard, do it with respect. Say, hey, I'm having a problem. Please help me. I don't know what to do. Yep. Properly tag the company. If you can, direct message them to keep, the, keep it out of the social realm, right. even though you're using a social channel. And then if they don't take care of you, of course, you can always go social and complain a little bit louder. You can blast them a little bit. I definitely learned that from my experience working for an agency. We utilize Twitter a lot. And now that's where I go. And I do do those things. Usually I'm going to have to tweet at Uber again. But anyway, Shep Hyken, thank you so much for joining us again today to talk about the customer experience. Hyken.com is your URL. And also you have a YouTube channel, yeah, www.shep.tv. Shep TV. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Everyone at home, thank you so much for tuning in to America Trends. We are here every night of the week, Monday through Friday at 10 p.m. on Biz TV. And you can find us on social at America Trends TV, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We'll see you tomorrow night.